Hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to do a follow-up video on the Rise MD at a thousand miles. So uh, this will be a follow-up to the first impressions video that I made last year. Has a little over a thousand miles and so far so good. There's definitely a difference between mid-drive and hub-drive bikes. For most commuters, and this is sold as a commuter bike either is fine. For off-road and loading on to the bike carriers, mid-drive does have some advantages, although it is quite a bit harder on the drivetrain. So we'll talk about that a little bit. So my first impressions, I really like the bike. Uh, it's incredible climbing power. It handles streets, bike paths, gravel roads just fine. Um, it does run better on a full charge, so as the battery depletes, you've got to pedal more. Uh, I get about 45 miles on a really hilly ride. If you're on a flat bike path, you can easily get 50 plus miles, I'm sure. Uh, I have made a few changes to the bike since I got it, and uh, mostly to customize it for me. Uh, I'm about 5'6", 36 inseam, and this is a big bike. It's really a little bit too big for me, but I've done a few things to make it better. First, I added a bell. Uh, the bell and um, and a, a phone holder because those are two necessary things uh, for bike paths and things like that. Added a horn for those people that can't hear the bell. Also got rid of the thumb throttle and put a a twist throttle because that's really uh, a personal preference and I like it on the right side and I like to twist it. You'll notice that uh, the handlebars have a larger rise than what came with the bike. These are 90 millimeters and the ones that came with the bike were pretty flat. So I had to raise that up. I also raised the stem up to its highest position. Uh, it gives me a more upright riding position and uh, it, it brings the handlebars back. So for me, it, it's again, it's a large frame and it's, it's just easier to ride with. I did replace the seat with a more cushioned seat. I also added a new um, bottle holder, the one it had didn't like so much. And um, so I want to talk a little bit now about the drivetrain. This mid-drive motor and, and transmission setup puts a significant amount of uh, work onto these chains and it really it eats them up. I've got about a thousand miles on the chain and freewheel and I've had to replace both of them. I had lost fifth gear completely, fourth gear was going out. I thought the chain might help it when I replaced it, but it just made it worse. So replace both of them and it, it's fine now. So uh, one of the things you really got to be aware of is that uh, these these mid-drive bikes put a lot of stress on these transmissions. I, here I'm measuring the chain. 0.5 says you're halfway through with the chain. 0.75 on a 7-speed transmission you should replace it. I replaced it at 0.5 and again I had to replace both of them. I was starting to get skips and things like that. So um, it's just something that you just need to be aware of. Keep, uh, keep on top of it. I religiously maintain this bike. It was uh, every hundred miles I would uh, clean the chain, clean the tra uh, free wheel, replace um, uh, anything that was broken. I would lube it and adjust it, re-index it as needed. And still it only lasted me a thousand miles. The, the rad uh, mid -dri uh, hub drive lasted me 2,500 miles uh, when I had replaced the chain and the free wheel was fine. So. There's a, there's a lot of difference between a mid-drive and, um, and a hub-drive on how much stress it puts on your drivetrain. So um, at the 900-mile maintenance point, I check, I, I check the brakes you know, uh, every few hundred miles. And at 900, these had to be replaced. So um, this is pretty good, actually, because when I had the RAD... Uh, the hub drive bike, I had to replace it at 800 miles. And, um, you know, 900 miles is better. Uh, one of the things I also had to do was replace uh, the rotors. Well, one rotor. The front rotor 
somehow had gotten warped. I don't know if it got hot or if it, uh, I hit it, hit something, it warped it, and I was unable to straighten it out. I got the tool, but it was a lost cause. So I replaced them. I replaced them with uh, better, uh, supposedly better, uh, um, ro uh, ro uh, rotors. Uh, these are hybrids. They've got aluminum in the middle and steel on the outside, so they're supposed to handle heat better. Uh, dissipate heat so you're less likely to warp on long uh, downhill rides where you're having to stay on top of the brakes uh, I also at the same time again the brake pads had worn out it was 900 miles time to change them and I, I took the centered brakes off brake pads off and put in some new ceramic brakes uh, there's supposed to be better as far as uh, maintaining control when you're bra braking hard and uh, they're certainly quiet and they stop really well so um, that's that again and so there they are the yellow uh, brake pads there so final thoughts is this is a great bike for commuting recreation light off-road made a number of changes mostly other than the the transmission and the uh, the rotors it's just personal preference it's a large bike 65 pounds it's a big bike so uh, it's better for larger you know people probably over 511 would be a lot more comfortable on it but uh, it's mid drive it's got great balance and um, overall really good bike very happy with it uh, and I will give you another update at 2,000 miles if you like the video please uh subscribe and we'll see you next time bye